Well, good afternoon and welcome to Overdevest Nurseries. We're here in midsummer. It's a really gorgeous day, a beautiful temperature. It's fairly cloudy, a little breezy, but it's just wonderful to be outside and to be surrounded here in our display gardens with some wonderful varieties of plants, things that we're testing and trialing out here to make sure that they grow well here in this region and to get the opportunity to share with you some of my tips and guidance and advice and things that you can do to make your gardening a little bit more successful. Now I suppose as gardeners I don't need to remind you that sometimes in gardening not everything goes the way we would like it. We've always got a few hiccups and surprises and yes, even failures. And I wanted to share with you a question that I got in from somebody called Nancy in Toms River, New Jersey. She wrote, I bought a Monarda Sugar Buzz grape gumball from a local nursery. It had a few flowers, but it doesn't have any anymore. I just went out to look at the plant and the middle of the upper leaves are green, but the bottom leaves are yellow around the edges with some brown spots and others have what looks to be powdery mildew. What can I do to make my plant healthy again? Well, it just so happens that elsewhere in our display garden, we have a plant, a Monarda, with powdery mildew too. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you and Nancy what you can do with it. And here it is. This is Monarda Cherry Pops looking less than stellar. I can tell you that earlier on this year when it was flowering with all of these gorgeous bright red flowers, it was an absolute picture. It's hardy, vigorous, easy to grow and an excellent variety. But this summer in the hot, dry, muggy weather with lots of humidity. As you see, the flowers have now gone over. It's running now where it's really virtually finished flowering and it has a little bit, not much, but it has a little bit of powdery mildew on here. And compared to some of the older traditional varieties, this is still, even though it doesn't look at its best right now, this is still one of the top performing bee balms out there. So what can we do to make our plants that look a bit like this in the middle of the summer look nice and healthy and vigorous again? Well, with many perennials, you would go in and remove the old flower heads. That stops them from making seed, diverts the energy into making young fresh growth, which as you see is coming up here from inside the plant, and that in turn would lead to flower buds and have it growing out. This would normally be flowering in another week or maybe two weeks time. So as you see, it's producing plenty of young growth from the center of the plant. Now already I think you can see that by going in and cleaning off the old spent flowers, it's already beginning to make the plant nice and healthy and vigorous looking again. Monardas are really tough, hardy, easy to grow native plants. And so while this would certainly work fine if you wanted to take a kind of gentle approach and just go through and remove the old flower heads, certainly this would work very well. And already you can see this plant is beginning to look really quite, quite nice. But because these are tough, hardy, native perennials, I suggest that we take a little bit more drastic action. And because we know this is a very good variety that will quickly replenish and grow, what I suggest we do is we go in with our pair of pruners and we trim back all of the old growth to about two or three inches off the ground. Just take it right back 
and that seems like as I say a kind of a drastic thing you will see there a lot of old debris that's down inside and even a few dead shoots in there clean all of that out and then if we go in and just snip some more out of it getting all of this debris and this is important because these old leaves here will have some of the disease spores already in the leaves which of course will spread again if we get the suit the conditions for it to come and grow on so by trimming it right back to the ground just to about two or three inches I suppose we're removing first of all the old spent flowers any diseased foliage particularly if you gather up any of this debris that might be here on the plant but also what's going to happen now is that it's going to stimulate a lot of young fresh growth from the center of the crown and I promise you this is going to be a healthy plant in full flower in about four or five weeks time now one thing you may have noticed here on the bed that we have recently replenished the mulch now that's important too because in the middle of the summer when it gets very dry it's important to keep a certain degree of moisture available to the plants in the ground that encourages plenty of strong growth so by putting down the mulch that will conserve the moisture and of course allow the roots to grow strongly and that in turn will help make plenty of young vigorous growth now another thing i would encourage you to do especially during any prolonged dry spells and that is to give your plants a good deep watering as you see what I'm doing here is spraying the water into the little planting depression that we created when we planted it this forms like a kind of little reservoir a kind of little bowl I suppose that captures the water and means that it goes down right down inside the crown to the root system and of course when you do that that's the stuff that's really going to get the plants growing nice and strongly now one thing about watering that I would encourage you to do and that is that give it a good deep watering like this you may even in the midst of summer only have to do this once or perhaps twice a week but if you give it a good deep watering like this it really is very effective when I'm out and about sometimes I'll see people and they're spritzing their plants over and that's okay but really honestly it doesn't do much good and now that I'm on the subject of watering what I suggest you do is also water if you can early in the morning that means that if you do splash anything onto the foliage it's got all day to dry off because it's that humid temperature moist humid conditions particularly in the evening that leads to some of the foliar diseases and also as a matter of course what I do is I try to direct the water in at the base of the plant that means that the tops of the plants will still be dry and that is a good way to reduce some of the foliar diseases as well and so Nancy that's how I suggest you can get your bee balm back to being healthy and attractive again and as a gardener of many decades I would encourage everyone not to be too concerned or despair if things in gardening don't quite turn out the way that we would like them over the years I can tell you that I've certainly had more than my share of stumbles and even failures but along with that came success and that's what makes it all so worthwhile this is David Wilson enjoy your gardening it's good for us and it's very good for our environment too